Insidious, The Red Door, directed by Patrick Wilson, and it's the fifth Insidious movie. Hot damn, dude. Five of these motherfuckers. Um, I really like the first one. The second one and the third one I only saw once uh, back in, like, fucking 2014, and I never watched the fourth one. The last keys or what the fuck ever. Um, so, going into this one, it's picks up right after two, and, uh, yeah, they hypnotize him, or, uh, the Patrick Wilson and the son, Ty Simpkins, and, uh, so they forget how to ask for planes, so the, uh, the demons and shit can't get him. Okay. Simple as that. And then, throughout this movie, it's just, uh, the son in an art class, he accidentally remembers how to ask for project, and, um, uh, unlocks the red door so shit starts coming through simple as that and um yeah it's okay <laughs> the uh so just it's kind of clear that uh James Wan really helped with the creative direction in the first one because this feels like a different movie it feels cheaper than the first one, and it's definitely simpler, I will say that, like, plot-wise, and just background-wise, and all this set design, just a lot less complex, it's really just simpler, and just really focused on the characters, I'm not complaining about that, I like that, and, um, uh, especially with Josh, and, uh, because in the first one they talk about, you know, he never knew his dad, so his mom was a single mom. But then you dive deeper, like, oh, his dad could astral project, but his dad couldn't figure it out. Like, the demons kept trying to get him and his son, so he killed himself. And that's kind of the crux of the movie is father and son and accepting who you are and accepting the pain. And you have to remember the pain to prevent further pain what it comes to and uh, a large chunk of the movie is with the son Dalton as it should be and all his shit in college is him kind of remembering how the astral project and unlocking the door accidentally like all that shit works um there's some clunky acting here and there but his roommate slash love interest Chris she's funny like she works well with him she's very bright and vibrant and he's just very kind of dark and plain that i liked and it's kind of the reason why he's dark and plain is because of the astral projection they have to erase it from his memories and shit and um there's a couple good scares here and there but uh i was really enjoying the story and shit and where it goes um and even, you know, retreads water, so it ends up with, you know, Dalton Astral Projection, uh, fucking Darth Maul's half-brother kidnaps him, chains him, like it did the first one, and, uh, Patrick Wilson goes in and saves him. That was pretty dope, how that all works out, and then how... He holds the, Patrick Wilson holds the door, so the son leaves, and I'm like, oh shit, is that just how it's gonna fucking go? But now the son ends up painting over the picture and shit, and so, that's how they trap the demons, is they paint over it, then he paints over that picture of father and son. So all that I liked, and uh, it was really dope. Uh, like, that aspect of it, everything else I thought was fine. Um... If they focused more on Dalton and Chris, I think it would have been better. If, like, they were the main characters of the movie and not so much going back to the, you know, the demons and shit, but, uh, like, trying to solve a mystery or something and he has to use his astral projection in order to solve this mystery, I think would be better. But, uh, as it stands, as it is, it's completely adequate. Uh... I would give it a solid 3 out of 5. Now, the fucking end credit song is fucking Stay by the Shakespeare Sisters. 
but it's covered by Patrick Wilson and Ghost. Fucking awesome. 